Sagar, what are you looking at today? Creating this show, this podcast with Crystal and seeing its wild success has been one of the greatest accomplishments of my life. And when I sit after the show and I see the millions of people that we're reaching on various platforms, or I see your messages or we meet you guys on the street, I feel alive knowing that there are actually a lot of people out there who want to watch the news and afterwards not want to kill your neighbor or gouge out your own eyes. <laughs> but beyond the personal achievement, I also sometimes think about it this way. What we have built here together, you and us, is I really mean the audience who backed us all the way. It's something that people in media have been trying to do for a long time. Billions of dollars in venture capital have been thrown at companies who promise to be news for millennials. BuzzFeed, Mike.com, remember AM2DM on Twitter? All those cringy Facebook watch shows just a few years ago, they were all fake astroturfed efforts at basically repackaging a mainstream BS news and then trying to sell it to you as one of your own. Today, we've actually got a great view into just how colossally stupid, naive, and ultimately weak the biggest players in the corporate media game are. It all starts with a column from the great Ben Smith of the New York Times. Ironically enough, he blew the lid off a company called Ozzy. Ozzy, Ozzy, I don't know how to pronounce it, don't much care. <laughs> Smith revealed that in February of 2021, Ozzy Media was in final stages to raise $40 million from Goldman Sachs. Now, during the fundraising call, they had a strange interaction with someone who purported to be an executive at YouTube. They felt really strangely about it, so they contacted that person they thought they had just met with. They discovered he had no idea what they were talking about. The voice on the other end of the phone that they thought was a YouTube executive was not that at all. It was the CE COO of OZ Media trying to trick them. One of the most brazen, possibly illegal things I've ever heard. But really it revealed the tip of the iceberg of such an obviously fake media company, which seduced some of the top levels of the entire media business. Smith reveals that Ozzy, founded by the aforementioned CEO named Samir Rao, COO, and CEO Carlos Watson, formerly of Goldman Sachs and Mike.com, it's a total fakery. They sold the idea of a millennial media company in 2013. <laughs> they raised their initial millions of dollars from Laureen Powell Jobs, the widow of Steve Jobs, Silicon Valley capitalist Ron Conway, as well as David Drummond. He was the chief legal officer of Google. Huge heavy hitters in the space. In 2014, they even raised money from Axel Springer. That's a huge media conglomerate in Germany that just bought Politico for a billion dollars. They raised $35 million from Mark Lazary. He's a hedge fund manager. He's a co-owner of the Milwaukee Bucks. They raised money from the Ford Foundation, who wanted to support a black-owned media company. With a total valuation in April of 2020 at $159 million, based on $89 million raised. Think about that. It's actually pretty impressive, right? Take a look at the numbers, though, that these so-called sophisticated media investors believed. In 2019, OZ claimed it had 50 million monthly unique users. Just to give you an idea, if that were true, it would be one of the most successful digital media click-based companies ever, like Vox, Vice, or Craigslist. But as Ben points out, if you take a look at their Comscore data, they were only getting 230,000 in June and 479,000 in July. That is half of what we get here on Breaking Points in a single day <laughs> whenever we have a show. Or look at this. They claim they had 20 million subscribers to their email <laughs> newsletters. If that were true, it would be the most successful email news uh, business on planet Earth. But my all-time favorite is the terrain I know very well. YouTube, where OZ has marketed itself as a, quote, fastest growing talk show in YouTube history. Well, as Crystal has pointed out here, they have videos like this, where you have 90K views, but only 12 likes and a single comment. They have videos with a million views, but fewer than 100 comment, which means what? We all know watching this what that means. It's all a fugazi. It's completely fake. And yet, the most sophisticated investors bought it to the tune of $90 million. <laughs> Even better, all of the so-called elites in media bought it too. PBS gave them a show. They had an interview show with Hulu. They had a show on the Oprah Winfrey Network that even won an 
Emmy in the news discussion and analysis section. They hired star reporters like BBC's Katie Kay, who was often on Morning Joe. Freaking NPR put the CEO of OZ, Carlos Watson, on their board of directors. <laughs> and Stephen Colbert once introduced him on his show as a, quote, media mogul. The best part is even after all of this was revealed to the Ford Foundation, one of the largest progressive nonprofits in America, they said they still believe in OZ because, quote, in an increasingly diverse world, it's no coincidence a company with co-founders of black and Indian descent would be so successful. Amazing. Identity politics is so powerful to these people. Even if you trick them when taking their own money, they'll still defend you in the pages of the New York Times. <laughs> Incredible. And now OZ claims that the New York Times piece was a hit job. They've placed their COO, who faked being a YouTube executive, on actual leave this time. But the lesson is this. The most sophisticated people in the media, both the executives and the investors, they're complete idiots who fell for this nonsense. That's great news for us because we are willing to, they are willing to spend all their money, all their resources, just for the promise that somebody somewhere can propagandize to you. But here's what they don't realize, and we do. The only way to reach young people is to expose the lies, the failure of the elite class that already manufactures the current iteration of news. No amount of money spent on a vibey website or a vibey video can dupe actual people into what they are selling. CNN is trying desperately to reach millennials with a new streaming network called CNN Plus. NBC News is launching shows on Peacock because they see nearly 22% of Americans get their news via streaming right here on YouTube. But what they'll never understand is that people turn here to YouTube and elsewhere to other emerging creators specifically to get away from the garbage that those people have been peddling. Their idiocy and noxiousness is to our benefit it shows us that as powerful as mainstream media has a hold on the country and the boomer mind, that in the end, the future is actually right here, folks. Whatever comes next can only come from the outside, and I really can't wait to see that reality. It's pretty amazing, I Crystal. Love story. They spent. Hey Not guys, thanks so much for watching. That's right. Just as a reminder, you can become a premium subscriber today. Watch the full show completely uncut. Our reactions to each other's monologues. You get to listen to it. You get to ask us questions. All that good stuff. Link is right there in the description or at breakingpoints.com. Best of all, great way to say screw you to the mainstream media.